So, so the rest of the afternoon will have a lot to do with the patient-powered uh, research networks and uh, also the, the CTSA uh, synergy. And uh, Doug Bell is the uh, chair of, of the, the steering committee of the UC Rex collaboration, that's UC Research Exchange, also the CTSA informatics director at UCLA, who just survived a, a grant submission, so yes. <laughs> as with some others in, in the audience. So uh, why don't we start right away with Doug Bell. Great. Thanks so much, Lisa. It's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, uh, two initiatives um, that are, are CTSA-based. Uh, UC Rex, which I talked about last year, so it's sort of an update, but it's not a prerequisite that you were here. Uh, and then NCATS Act, which is a new initiative funded by NCATS, the uh, National Center for Advancing Translational Science, which is the funder of the CTSAs, and uh, many of us have been involved in that as well. So, uh, so overall, uh, these are, th the point of both these is really cohort discovery. It's uh, uh, addressing the problem that, that studies often fall short of recruitment targets. Uh, EHR data could be used to find and recruit eligible subjects for studies. And if institutions could just join forces, we could find much bigger populations. Uh, and so we uh, thought about this, and really Lucilla was a uh, prime uh, mover in forming UC Rex, which is uh, the five UC health systems banding together uh, five years ago now, uh, uh, to, uh, to do this uh, cohort discovery across uh, across the UCs as just really a first step in terms of data uh, sharing and collaboration. But uh, we uh, successfully obtained funding from University of California Office of the President uh, with uh, sort of uh, supervision through UC Braid, which was the five CTSAs uh, of, the, of the different, uh, the five UC medical centers. Uh, the vision for UC Rex was to enable researchers to search for study cohorts using EHR data from all five campuses, and also using a, a IRB reliance uh, to improve access to that data. And I'll be updating you on how that's going. Uh, and we set up working groups. I, I'm not going to go into the governance, really, or, or how we get things done, unless that's a question. But we have working groups, uh, uh, more than this, actually, but, but focused on technical implementation, the data itself, user support, and, uh, and, and marketing of this, uh, which uh, is, uh, is going to be a more of a focus ongoing, as you can see, or as you'll see from my results. So, um, uh, so we set up something called UC Rex Data Explorer, which uh, is the software platform we're using based on uh, open source software from Harvard uh, called I2B2 and Shrine. Um, I2B2 stands for Informatics for Integrating Biology in the Bedside. These are sort of the names. Shrine uh, is a software platform that integrates I2B2 across different um, organizations. I'll show you a little diagram of how that works. Um, and the point really is to have self-service cohort size estimation for investigators so, so that investigators can just using a drag and drop uh, uh, interface with ontology concepts, set up Boolean queries to see how many patients do they have uh, meeting certain criteria. This is what it looks like if you haven't used it. You, uh, you find the terms you want to search for. Uh, you want to search for how many patients match a particular definition. You drag the terms you want over here. So this would be a search looking for patients with opioid dependence, a diagnosis of opioid dependence, plus a diagnosis of lumbago, which is the ICD for uh, low back pain. Uh, so, uh, you know, but you can choose arbitrary uh, co-occurrences and, uh, and, and put a lot of other uh, restrictions on the query uh, to, uh, to identify your patients. And then what happens is um, at, you, you work with a, uh, an instance of this interface at one site. It then broadcasts its message through via your, the Shrine instance at your site uh, out to each Shrine at each site, these are each of the five uh, UC medical centers represented here. These are the electronic medical records. Ahead of time, we've done ETL uh, into a data warehouse that's the I2, really the I2B2 data warehouse at each site. Uh, and so it's standardized and harmonized across all the sites. So, so then the Shrine software sits as the interface to I2B2. Uh, it then sends the query. It gathers 
the, the sh your original shrine site gathers the queries back up from each of the other sites and then it returns it to you in the in the user interface so it's a it's a totally federated architecture this data is never pulled into one place and it's sort of a it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer architecture as well at least the way we have it set up now so that each each site communicates with every other site um, and uh, uh, and then you get your results and it can it looks like this so if yeah, this is that same query, and these are the numbers of patients that we found uh, at each site. So if you needed, say, a thousand patients, you would know that maybe if you just did UCLA and UC Davis and UC I, you that might be good enough, depending on where you have co-investigators to talk talk with. Um, so that uh, that is the basic idea now uh, of the functionality. Now, um, what we have in, in UC Rex at the moment is uh, demographics. Uh, ICD-9 diagnoses and procedures. We have the top 100 lab tests. Uh, we have all medication orders, um, and we have uh, BMI and vital signs. Actually, we found out we, we have historical medications too from the EPIC site. So, so, so uh, those are actually blended in, and they look in the tables a lot like the orders. So, uh, so, so that means that whatever the patient said they were taking is also represented uh, in in our current um, setup. Uh, this is the total number of uh, patients we have. We're uh, uh, one, 14, this is as of uh, the end of last month, uh, uh, the end of um, August. Uh, uh, 14 million patients, uh, total number of observations pushing a billion. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can see, you know, I just highlighted it in blue a couple of interesting things like uh, uh, because we have differing amounts of history data in there. so. Um, and this is going to continue, this is going to be an issue for uh, uh, P-scanner sites as well, of course, uh, is the, some heterogeneity in the underlying data sources. So, so for instance, UC Davis has had, uh, even though they have, you know, kind of more of an average number of patients, they have a larger number of diagnoses uh, because they've been up for much longer than the rest of us you know, on EPIC. So they have a longer history of diagnosis information. Uh, UCLA has a lot of labs because we have loaded legacy lab data going back to 2005, I believe. Um, and uh, so we, we have a lot of labs. Uh, UCSD has a lot of medications, uh, uh, presumably because you've been e-prescribing longer at UCSD than, than other places. Uh, uh, UCSD doesn't have a lot of procedures because they weren't coding them you, uh, at UCSD using um, ICD-9, which is what we have, until very recently. So, so actually procedures at UCSD are only, only very recent. So these are the kinds of things you need to know about, uh, about the data sometimes to, uh, to use it. Um, so how have we been doing on usage? Uh, this is our usage in 2014. Uh, and you can see we have a big peak. You can see it's fairly seasonal with a big peak uh, in the fall. And then so far in 2015, it's, it's up, but not a great deal. Uh, and so, you know, but I think we're still waiting to see what happens here with, uh, with the peak. Um, uh, if we have uh, as much of a peak uh, this year, then we will we'll have, uh, we'll have some increase in usage. But um, you know, still overall, we think this is a pretty underused resource. Uh, the number of investigators using this is, uh, is less than 50 at each campus um, at the moment. So we really still have a lot of marketing to do to get the word out on this being available. Um, if we look by site, uh, you know, UCLA in 2014 was the leader in, in using the system, but now in 2015 UCSF has caught up. Uh, and uh, UC San Diego is coming up some as well, although, you know, maybe dropped off actually a little bit since 2014. And then, you know, we really still need to do uh, more marketing at UC Davis in particular. Uh, it actually went down. UC Irvine, pretty stable. Overall, we're still really uh, underutilizing this, um, I believe. Um, and, you know, and that just also highlights an issue that, you know, that uh, the um, CDRNs are going to have too is, is, you know, marketing and, and, uh, and uh, getting the, uh, the services that we're building actually used. Um, and then it, our ultimate outcomes were really to uh, promote more science and, and more collaborative science among the sites. Uh, and so, uh, we haven't done any kind of scientific survey. We've just sent out an email to, uh, to 
uh, ask for uh, ask investigators who'd use the system um, uh, to report any funded or pending proposals, and we were able to identify that they any any proposals for which they used uh, data out of out of UC Rex. Um, and uh, 28 we were identified 28 proposals that were submitted. Uh, 13 of those so far have been funded for a total of. Uh, uh, $8.5 million, uh, and that's actually not including, I'll just jump, that it's not including P-Scanner or NCATS Act, which also really uh, were enabled greatly, I think, by, uh, by, this, by having UC Rex in place, at least. Uh, um, but, uh, but, but these are actual, you know, individual studies uh, looking at particular, uh, you know, disease-related conditions. So uh, 10 are still pending of the ones we identified. And five we have found out were not funded. Uh, uh, usually those were just following up on ones that were originally pending. Um, so uh, uh, by campus, if you look at them, eight of the funded proposals uh, were at UCLA uh, for a total of 6.8 million, two were at UCSF, one was at UCSD, and two were at UC Davis, actually. So, uh, and none were at UC Irvine. Uh, now that may just be because we haven't surveyed UC Irvine as effectively. Uh, because there is certainly some query volume. Um, and then, uh, you know, so th I think the big question that we're gra grappling with right now, uh, and that if you have suggestions would be lovely to hear, uh, is how can we help more investigators succeed, uh, you know, uh, find out about the system, get trained on the system. Uh, we're pursuing some strategies, but uh, uh, that would be nice to discuss. So. Um, also, we can get patient level data, uh, um, and uh, each campus has a somewhat different process, but, uh, but I just wanted to highlight, especially for anyone here who wants to uh, get patient level data, uh, de-identified or limited data sets are definitely easier, um, and uh, you really, um, uh, even for limited data sets, we have agreement that only local IRB approval is needed, uh, um, or you know, in some cases it may be exempt. Um, the PI or some responsible party, I think at UCLA they prefer that a department chair or CAO actually sign the data use agreement that you need for a limited data set, um, but you don't have to have a local PI, uh, uh, and you should be able to get uh, limited data set data from all sites. For identified data, you do have to have a local PI, but we can use the UC uh, Trust and Rely registry that exists, and we will be securely provisioning data through iDash. Um, so, uh, now, just to go on quickly to the NCAT's Advancing Clinical Trials Project, that's uh, also a shrine network but involving a large number of organizations, 21 CTSAs. Uh, the ontology is, uh, is somewhat similar uh, to what we have in UC-REx, uh, um, although there have been some data harmonization uh, challenges. Um, it does include some upgrades to shrine, which are nice. Uh, it permits a hub-and-spoke architecture. Uh, it gives you uh, the ability to restrict the uh, queries to uh, being in the, having the observations in the same encounter, and uh, you can um, you can look at temporal associations. So one uh, one observation has to follow another observation by a certain amount of time, um, and uh, this is really all a prologue. Th this is actually up and 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 mostly working, but not officially live yet. Uh, uh, and, and my understanding is that when it works, it's actually reasonably fast. Uh, but um, it, the, the real idea now is that it's a prologue to a, a recruitment innovation center, which is the new program that NCATS uh, Act will be funding. Uh, and if, if this Act project gets picked as one of the innovation centers, then there will be a new uh, I2B2 smart tool that uh, allows more detailed cohort examination. Uh, and uh, one of their projects is to integrate with, the, with UC TrialQuest or to set up a, um, uh, a generalized version of UC TrialQuest uh, to search IRB data for similar protocols and, and co possible co-investigators. And then another one they've picked is, is the UCSD registry uh, or UCSD's proposal to develop a registry of patient preferences. So, uh, so that's where ACT is going, and, uh, and then we'll each have a li liaison to the Recruitment Innovation Center, uh, and, and we may, uh, I'm out of time, so I'll just uh, wrap this. Uh, but each CTSA will have to have a, a unit dedicated to patient recruitment that would uh, interact with the, re with the uh, innovation centers to, uh, to innovate. 
Uh, and uh, that's it. Any questions? And was just I was just wondering, are, are we going to be proceeding down the path of using both? Or do you think there will be any convergence at any point? Uh, I, I think that we, we will be using them in parallel for at least a little while. They have their advantages and disadvantages, um, obviously. The, the, um, uh, the, the big advantage of I2B2 Shrine is that it's uh, investigator uh, self-driven. It's, uh, it's a self-service model, but it's a much more restricted amount kind of kinds of information. It's really just counts that you can get uh, at this point through I2B2 or through Shrine. And then, you know, with the if uh, if ACT gets chosen as the uh, innovation center, then it will be used for patient recruitment, and there will be tools to put in data requests. But it, but it's still going to be focused on uh, getting patients for particular trials and not really on comparative effectiveness research uh, and the kinds of things that, uh, and the distributed analyses that I think uh, P-Scanner is doing. So, um, uh, so somewhat different focus, but, but with overlap. And I, I think if the, if the data harmonization uh, uh, can be brought together more, then, then they can synergize each other. I think we're, we're looking right now at some, at developing some synergies between the OMOP extractions that we're doing and, and uh, you know, what, uh, what could be used for I2B2 in the future. Thank you.